Hey guys, it's Martin here from Education Hub. I will be in charge of giving all of you viewers a better insight on DSLRs and I will also be teaching all of you some photography skills and giving you tips around photography. I will also be teaching you some basic techniques of Photoshop as well, which can hopefully uh, help you improve your photos and emphasize your main subjects if you have any in the pictures that you want to edit. So one main thing uh, about these videos is that I will be using a DSLR and this is um, quite crucial uh, as the settings that I will go through might not be included in your camera and they have even less chances um, if, if you're using a phone. Uh, now there are some phones out there um, which can help you, uh, you know, uh, which can let you take pictures automatic, uh, with full manual, uh, and that's what we will be doing. So, if you have these settings, you know, uh, uh, that's great, and watch this video as I feel like it could help you. Another thing is that I will be using a Nikon camera, uh, uh, the Nikon D3200 to be more specific, um, to take most of these pictures, so most of the set, uh, settings that I'll be mentioning, the modes that I'll be mentioning, are all going to be Nikon related. So, you know, if you're using a different uh, different brand like Canon, uh, there might be slight different uh, variations on what they're called, but um, I hope you guys can figure that out. I will not be mentioning them, so I'm very sorry. Um, so yeah, um, uh, this episode I'll be focusing on teaching you guys the four manual settings you'll see on the Nikon DSLRs, uh, which are manual, which uh, which is the manual setting, which is represented by the letter M, the program, uh, the program mode, which is represented by the letter P, the aperture priority represented by the letter A, and the sh uh, and the shutter priority, which is represented by the letter S. You can switch between these modes with the mode selector wheel on the top part of your camera. Uh, they're normally there, uh, plus it's quite inevitable. Uh, you can't miss it, it's right there. And no, uh, very important note, uh, as I have mentioned this, other brand brands might have different names of these settings. So I hope you guys are okay with it if you're not using an icon camera. Um, out of all of these uh, four settings, however, I will be using manual as I, I'm most com comfortable with it. Um, but you know, the other two, uh, which are aperture priority and shutter priority, will also become helpful. Now, I'm sorry as I have not uh, explained what these uh, four different settings are, but I'll give a brief ex explanation of what they are. The program mode select, um, you know, selects the shutter speed and aperture automatically for you, and it also keeps the uh, exposure the same, exposure value the same. Um, most people get confused, uh, you know, they kind of get mixed with uh, the uh, the program mode and the automatic. But you do have to understand that everything else is manual, so you'll have. You have no control of the shutter speed and the aperture, but everything else is all under your hand, so the ISO, everything. Um, the aperture priority is is a mode where you can select your aperture, your desired aperture, but your camera automatically selects the shutter speed, um, and everything else is uh, and everything else is manual. Uh, that you need to keep in mind, and the shutter priority, which is basically the opposite of aperture priority. Uh, you get to select your shutter speed, but the camera selects the aperture for you. Now, as I said, um, I will be using the manual, which is, you know, yeah, you have basically control over everything in your camera. Uh, the reason why I will be using, I'll be using this is because it allows me to select um, the aperture and shutter speed, uh, both at the same time, and that's what we'll be focusing on, which is aperture. Alright, so I'm going to be explaining to you guys the aperture range. Um, as you can see in the in the picture, in, this, in your screen right now, um, the larger the aperture, the smaller the f-stop. Now what does that mean? As you can see, there's a value right after an f, 
uh, right under the little aperture range that you can see. Um, so the larger the actual aperture is, uh, so the smaller the f-stop, um, the more shallow your depth of field it becomes. Now, um, this is pretty important because if you, um, you'll normally see a lot of photographers use a larger aperture for photos like macro pictures, right? Um, where the subject is standing right there and everything else is kind of blurred out um, but then you use a smaller aperture uh, which which allows you to basically get everything um, in focus uh, so where it has the greatest depth of field now um, this is one of the techniques that I'll be going over on this episode and you know um, now, I will also be combining it with the rule of thirds. Now, the rule of thirds, I will be using Photoshop for this, so if you have Photoshop as well, that's great. Um, I'm sure that there are uh, a lot of other um, photo editing, picture editing softwares out there where you can get the rule of thirds. And with a mixture of both, you can create a good picture with a subject in, ha in, in it. Uh, turn it into a great picture um, you know this could be basically anything if you're just taking pictures of something that you want with everything else blurred out or you know even with friends um, make the people stand out make the subject stand out better have everything else kind of blurred out it makes uh, it helps a lot so okay so the main thing that we now have to do is we have to um, fiddle around with the aperture and uh, and the shutter speed. As mentioned before, this is done manually, and you can see the details of the picture itself on the bottom right corner. So to actually change the aperture uh, and the shutter speed, uh, you'll have to go to well on your camera. Uh, make sure it's on the M. Um, on the M mode, on the manual mode, and basically whenever you have, when you, the camera is ready to shoot, with the little scrolling bar um, on the, basically on top, or on the top right uh, part of the camera um, where the LCD is, there should be a little scrolling part, or it could be anywhere else on the camera, but it must be there. Um, Basically, what you want to do is to change the shutter speed. You just kind of switch a, uh, switch it around. Uh, you make it, you know, uh, you scroll to make it larger, uh, faster, or basically slower. Um, and to change the aperture, you're gonna have to select the plus minus button. Um, as you can see on my camera, it's recorded. Uh, it's it's um, placed right above. Uh, well, uh, not right above. Um, below. Um, to the right hand side of the of the shooting button um, uh, so you want to select that hold that and scroll with um, scroll the little uh, the wheel that you have to change the aperture so I already explained what aperture um, is now the shutter speed um, when in combination with the um, with the aperture you have to make sure that uh, you know the combination of both is um, is well done. Um, make sure that um, it is what you want. Um, so we have to understand that the the less time, the less uh, the faster the shutter speed, the less light you're gonna get. So you will be using a faster shutter speed when you're in a brighter situation and you'll be using uh, uh, a much slower shutter speed if you're taking a picture let's say when it's dark outside um, make sure that both of these are um, are configured correctly and it's all on your hands so what I like to do personally if I have a lot of time like when um, you know when I'm not pressured to take a picture fast like um, like this one right here, like this picture right here. Um, I take my time to make sure that the that the shutter speed and the aperture are 
or you know um, or where or is what I want um, it's what I want so I just go around fiddle with them and once I get the correct aperture and the correct shutter speed I put down my camera on a stand and I just take the picture now keep in mind that if you are going to take pictures with slower shutter speed I highly suggest a, a tripod um, a stand of any sort or a stable uh, a stable place where your camera won't move because you will get blurry images um, so yeah um, basically all that you need to remember is make sure that the aperture and this and the shutter speed give you what you want um, do not be afraid to take multiple pictures before you find the perfect one um, or what you're happy with um, so the main point is just make sure you have the the correct uh, aperture and the shutter speed for your liking oh, for example this one a simple uh, a simple coca-cola on a on a, on a table um, so as you can see in this picture the aperture is pretty high and the coca-cola is just um, there and it's the main focus point now this picture is good I would say not the greatest <laughs> definitely not the greatest but it's not too bad um, one way however we can um, improve upon this picture with simply just to applying the rule of thirds now the rule of thirds is basically a method of composing your images so your images are like uh, so that the main focus the main subject is the um, is at the focus points of the picture and makes it stand out despite it not being in the middle um, now to perfect this um, this new uh, you know technique uh, you have to understand that whenever these rule of third lines appear uh, the the subject that you want has to be along the lines and the most important important parts if you have any need to be on the intersection of the lines now as you can see in the screen this is what the rule of third looks like so when you first uh, start Photoshop and load up the image you'll it will be a clear image and you will most likely um, have the pointer selected uh, the mouse pointer, the move tool um, selected and um, to apply the rule of thirds uh, all you have to do is go to the crop tool and once you select it um, you'll still see the same thing but with the little dotted lines and the edges covered um, and to actually see the rule of thirds all you have to do is uh, make sure that on the on the second menu bar uh, we're on the view section there is you have the rule of thirds selected now once you have these selected you want and you can select any of the uh, uh, points on the sides the ones on the edges or the ones in the middle of each side and once you select them these lines will uh, appear now uh, as you can see in this picture um, the coca-cola uh, uh, the coca-cola can is not exactly on the lines as I had mentioned before so what we're basically going to be doing is moving this picture uh, we're cropping this picture um, to make sure that the Coca-Cola stand uh, the Coca-Cola can is right where it should be between these lines that it's crossing so that it has a bigger emphasis on whoever is looking at this picture um, so as you can see I am holding down on the edge on the bottom left corner and now I'm just positioning it so that the, the Coca-Cola can it fits perfectly on the left vertical line and the intersections I'm basically gonna add between the between the logo of the can itself so you know um, the viewers the, uh, the the ones that are looking at the image itself they can see that coca-cola is the main focus yeah. um, as mentioned before this camera this photo um, is taken with a lower aperture 
um, the details can be seen on the bottom right corner and yeah uh, this effect this has a great effect as everything else is blurred out and the cool color just stands out well this is the end of the video uh, i hope this kind of helped you a little bit um you know uh, it's a little it's a little things that really matter uh with this detail with this little technique i'm sure you can emphasize your your main subject of the pictures uh, i hope you found this helpful um and next episode i will be showing photoshop skills and how you can emphasize and even make the picture even better um right now i'm gonna pass a couple of, oh, well one picture exactly of an xbox one controller which is dismantled and disassembled right now um and to truly show you the difference between um the two different sides of the aperture um well as you can see on the screen right now um both on the left hand side and the right hand side you can clearly see the uh, the, the two different um, settings that I have used um, and use this keep this in mind and uh, it can help you a lot taking close-up pictures macro pictures or any other different um, you know using the rule of thirds can also be very helpful uh, a combination of both of these are great to make to, to make your subject stand out better uh, and it will really help you find a focus point of uh, of the picture itself. Uh, I really ho hope this um, this video helped you guys. Take care, and I'll catch you guys on the next one.